Welcome to the Combat Athlete Physio YouTube channel where we take human movement science and we bring it to the combat sports. UFC 319 is coming and we've got a pretty savage matchup on our hands with Kamzat Chimaev versus Drikas Duplessis on the main card. Given these two fighting styles, we can expect this to be pretty chaotic. But today we're going to look at some of the biomechanical underpinnings specifically for Kamzat Chimaev and how he could potentially use them against a guy as unpredictable as DDP. Okay, so we've got two different clips here of two different fights from Shemaev and Lee, and then Shemaev and Usman that are gonna help us understand the concepts that I want us to get out of this video. Okay, so the first concept is how well Kamzat Shemaev moves in the sagittal plane, particularly whenever he's going for his uh, typical, but not so typical head to the rear leg, double leg takedown, okay? So let's see what happens here. So he fakes high, he flexes at the trunk, his center of mass drops, he lunges for his penetration step, and then he makes contact. Okay, so what the sagittal plane is, if you haven't heard that before, a plane of movement is essentially just an imaginary flat surface that cuts through the body, and it helps us understand how the body moves. And so with the sagittal plane that's bisecting the body and cutting it into right and left halves, if we move through that imaginary surface or parallel to that imaginary surface, it is considered to be within that plane. This is a really good example of how Chimaev uses the sagittal plane to penetrate for that double leg. Also, if that word, that terminology sounds foreign to you or you just want to understand it deeper, I've actually got an intro to combat sports biomechanics course that you can go and kind of learn if you're curious. I break down these topics in detail to help you understand and and develop a foundational understanding of movement. So go check that out. I'll have it linked in the description if you want to go look at it. So what's actually happening from musculoskeletal perspective and biomechanical perspective whenever he's moving along the sagittal plane? Well, the first thing I want you to notice is his trunk. Okay, so watch from the hips to the shoulder. You can see that he bends forward at the waist. His trunk bends forward. That's trunk flexion. Muscles like the rectus abdominis, the internal and external obliques are responsible for this movement. The second thing I want you to notice that as he moves forward, his center of mass drops what we colloquially call a level change. And you can see his shorts and his knee getting closer to the ground. His knee actually hits the ground here. His rear knee gets the ground here. As his left leg contacts the ground, it's contracting eccentrically to help lower himself down, but in a controlled way so that he doesn't just kind of smack his face against the canvas. And then he makes contact. Again, that rear, his head to the rear leg side, and then he starts to move outside of the sagittal plane. He starts to rotate. Okay, so those are some of the things that Kamzat Shemaev does really well from a biomechanical perspective that helps him access the legs. We've also got things like timing and fight IQ, but this video is not about that. This video is about what is happening, not how he could be better uh, because this was an effective move. He got the takedown, which we'll see here in a second. So the main thing to take away from this is how well Kamzat Shemaev moves in the sagittal plane when he level changes and has that penetration step for his, his signature head to the rear side double leg. Next thing we're gonna look at conceptually is this idea of the leg lace. Now he does a very good job of breaking down his opponents once he gets to the back and not letting them build a good base. Okay, and he uses the leg lace to do this. So what's happening on the leg that is laced so when I say leg lace, I just mean he's got his leg kind of wrapped and intertwined around the other leg, and you'll see what we're talking about here in a second whenever he starts to do it. At the level of the hip, his hip is in a position called external rotation. You can see his knee is kind of flared out relative to the hip. That's in a position of external rotation. Muscles like some of those deep external rotators, there are many, I will not name them all. And a big muscle, the glute max, which we've all heard of, is helping externally rotate the hip. As he starts to try to break that base like he's doing right there, he also extends the knee to try to straighten that leg out with muscles like the quadriceps so he can get a little bit of a better bite and straighten that leg out in, in order to make it harder, again, for Lee to, to build a base. He's also trying to do something called ankle dorsiflexion or where you bring your toes up. Okay, plantar flexion would be pointing your toes down. Dorsiflexion would be pointing your toes up. And he tries to kind of hook with dorsiflexion the part of the lower leg, but you can see that Lee does a really good job of getting out of that. Okay, so had he dorsiflex more or had he had a little bit more uh, of, a, of a better bite, he may have gotten it, who knows. Uh, but he does a good job of escaping that. But that's what's happening at the lower extremity. We've got hip external rotation, knee extension and ankle dorsiflexion, and he'll even try to extend the hip at some times whenever we'll see that in the next clip. But Really watch this. If he gets the DDPs back, he will almost certainly try to lace that leg and take away one of the points of contact so that he can't build a base. 
Okay, so now for the second clip, this is his fight with Usman, and we're just gonna get right into it. So he goes for that rear leg, take <laughs> double leg takedown, and while he's moving in the sagittal plane, he's got a lot of space, right? But again, remember, all that matters is what's effective, okay? So he does the same types of stuff. He flexes that trunk. He doesn't get as much of a level change, but that knee, as soon as this leg is planted, those quads are helping control that movement down in something called an eccentric contraction, and he still gets control of that rear leg somehow. As you guys know, if you've watched this fight, he gets to the takedown, but again, this is, this is all kind of happening in that sagittal plane there. Okay, so he gets that leg, and it's a little bit longer, so we're just gonna fast forward until he gets to the point where I wanna watch that leg lace. All right, so here's where he starts to lace his legs really well. Okay, it's kind of hard to see because you're looking through the fence and it's a little bit blurry, but I think we'll be able to see it pretty well. So he gets this leg lace, boom, right there. So you can see where he grabbed it, laced the leg. He starts to, to bring the, the thigh back. We didn't see that as much. Okay, so when you start to bring the thigh bone back relative to the trunk, that's actually hip extension. So his hip was externally rotated last time. This is more of a hip extension which is mainly the glute max and the hamstrings that are extending the hip. But again, he's got that knee flexion. He's starting to straighten the leg out. And he's also got that dorsiflexion. But Usman does a good job of getting his leg out. And let's just back up just a little bit. Whenever somebody makes you put their hands on the ground, if your opponent is on your back and your hands are on the ground, you've only got three points of contact, usually something is not good. You are not in, in control. Okay, so that's exactly what he's trying to do decrease the points of contact so he can stop for him from building a base. And then of course, Usman's trying to build a base and get out for back control. All right, so he gets his leg out, but then what does he do? He laces it again. And so this time, in order to get that leg lace, he extends the hip like we talked about earlier. And he keeps his knee a little bit more flexed in this position just because he's got pretty good control already and it doesn't look like Usman is going to be able to slip out as easily as he did last time. So again, just take all of this into consideration. Jemayev's ability to move quickly in the sagittal plane and then his ability to lace the leg and use his really strong lower extremity uh, biomechanically to decrease his opponent's ability to build a base. And look, I don't want you to think this is some like Chimaev glaze fest, okay? Chimaev is not just going to sit there and let this happen. He's got a very unorthodox style, which I've broken down before. So I recommend going down and watching those breakdowns that I'll have linked in the con or linked in the description uh, so you guys can make and, and understand kind of what you're watching a little bit better. Hopefully, now that you understand a little bit of the biomechanics behind some of these strategies that fighters use in different situations. So let me know down in the comments who you think is going to win. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.